everybody and welcome to my guide here on using control net and the method I'm going to use here today that I'm going to show you just as a couple things to let you know about is doing batch processing so in order to use this method um, before you get too far into this let me show you so first I have the regular video here this is just a short video of a guy breakdancing there on the ground and so what I have done to get this video ready to convert with control net first thing I did was I just cropped it a bit I just made it a square video here which is not necessary but you will get better results if you keep it to like 512 by 512 so I just cropped it there and the next thing you will need to do is you'll need to be comfortable using a video editor to turn it into frames and so if you'll see here what I did is I then exported the movie here into frames and you can also kind of do a cool little rotoscope thing there. Anyways, so back to the task at hand. So this is what you will need to do. So if you're not comfortable editing the movies and turning them into frames, there's a lot of um, like um, GIF animators and things like that where you can turn movies into frames. So it, it's really pretty basic editing here. But I just want to let you know that before we start. So now that we have this, I just wanted to show you what I'm using here to use control net now for this method. Now I am also going to do on, on the deform method, which um, deform is still working on control net. I believe control net itself is also being updated pretty regularly, but if you're like me, you just want to get in and do it. So I wanted to kind of show you how to do it now, but I anticipate that this will be changing fairly rapidly over the next month or two there will probably be better methods to do it things like that and like I said deform is also working on it and I'm going to be doing one on that soon as well okay now one other quick thing before I do get in the notebook the next thing I want to do actually before we start up is to upload my frames here into a folder so I've got here here's all my frames with the with the output images now I have also if you'll see I've created three blank folders here so what these are going to be is I'm going to use these for the export of the batch images that I'm going to use to create the video and I've just put three versions there just because sometimes um, the first version might not come out all right you can override them but I just want to have a little bit of leeway there to experiment things like that so before I load up the notebook first thing I'm doing is I'm uploading all of my my folder there with those with those frames I have for the video into my Google Drive so I'm going to go ahead now and open up the notebook Okay, so the first thing I'm doing, I want to point one thing out. I'm not using the regular Deform Notebook here. I'm actually using um, the Last Bend Fast Stable Diffusion. So why I'm using this so I can use Auto 1111. Now I can run it locally. I've got a graphic card that can handle it, but um, to be honest, it kind of chugs. I've got it just doesn't run very fast. So I'm gonna do this through Google Colab, but it should still be the same parameters whether you're running it locally or whether you're running it um, like I am with this notebook. And I'll go ahead and put a link down to this notebook. And while I do like the the Deform notebook, I do prefer to use that rather than Auto 11. Auto 111 just has so many extensions now that it's really kind of a must um, for control net for one thing, which is what this video is about. So I'm just keeping everything mainly at the default here. I'm just gonna use this model 1.5. You can change the models out too and use different models and things, but I'm just gonna use this for now. And if you notice, here's the control net. So I'm going to put a link to this notebook. This does come built in with the control net. So you won't have to um, install the extension for that. And I'm going to go ahead and select all of them for now. Um, the main one I'm using, though, is actually this one called Canny. We'll get into that once we open it up. So I'll come check back once this is all loaded. This does take a little while to load. Okay, now once this notebook has finished loading, we want to click on this link and this will load up the web UI interface. Now it is still using the Google Colab processors and everything. So we won't be running it locally. We are still using the um, Colab notebook. That's the whole purpose of this notebook is that we can use their processors. I can run it locally, but honestly my system chugs a little bit. I've got a little bit of an older card. So I will probably do some more stuff locally once I get an upgrade here. But for now, let's just go ahead and dive right in here. So first thing we want to do um, so if you notice, I do have the deform extension here installed, but I'm not going to be using this control net. This is currently still a work in progress. And also control net itself is also kind of being updated. So right now I'm just going to show you the image to image batch processing method that I'm going to use. So first thing I'm going to do here 
is I'm going to copy the path to that folder with all the frames that I've uploaded to my Google Drive previously. And I'm going to open up this batch processing. I'm going to copy and paste my folder there with the frames. And this next folder here is just a blank folder that I'm going to use for the output images. So I'm going to put that there. And one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the settings just a little bit here. I'm going to put the denoising strength up to 1. We're going to click Enable there. And the method we're going to use here is Canny. I'll get into some of these other ones um, with some still images. For now, I'm just going to show you the Canny. And then once you know how all of these um, con different control net models work, then you can experiment with any one of them you want for the animation. Any of them will work as far as I know. But for now, I'm just going to use the canny. This is the one that kind of seems to give us the most kind of similar result to our initial video. So um, you want to click Enable. You want to pick these models here. And that should be about it. I think, well, nope, not quite yet. We still need to put in our prompts, of course. So let me get my first prompt here. I'm actually going to do a few videos here. First one is just going to be kind of an Android here. And there's my prompt, and then I've got my default negative prompt ready to go here as well. So I'm just going to paste that in here, and away we go. Now we are just ready to generate. And so what it's going to do is it's going to make, it's going to um, take each image, each of those frames as an init image, and change it with control net. And it's going to keep a lot of coherence here. I could do it even further. Um, it's still going to have some flickering and stuff, but I'm still kind of experimenting with settings. But this is really a vast improvement over a lot of previous kind of AI videos that we get here. And there we go. There's the first frame. And another thing you can do here is, if you notice here, it is it's running in the notebook here. It's using the Google GPUs and everything. And it will update the frames here, though, in your control net UI there. It should, anyways. It looks like it. Now, this does happen to me sometimes. It will quit updating here in the window. I think this might just have to do more with my browser cache than anything. But it is still making the images. We can go check that here. If you notice here in um, my output frames here. You notice it is still generating those frames there. So if that happens to you, don't freak out. It's probably just a personal issue with me for my browser. So it is still running. It's just for some reason it's not updating here in this browser anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and let it run though. And I'm going to do two more. Hopefully that won't happen on the next one. But if you are, if you do have this happen, I don't know how common this is. Um, this happens periodically to me. I'm not sure why, but it is still running. If you notice it's still running in the notebook there. And it's still giving me my new frames here. So this has a total of 186 frames altogether. So I'll come check on it when this is finished. And we'll check out this control net video here. Okay, and then once it is done, what you do is just go into your folder here where you're storing your output frames and you download it. So I'm just going to download this now. And this will have, you notice this will have all the frames in that it just generated. And then you just have to assemble them. Again, there is a little bit of video editing skills here required. You just need to assemble these. There's a lot of programs that will assemble a series of images into an animation. But I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And then I will show the results over here to the side. And meanwhile, I'm going to go ahead. This has, I think it has two more frames left, 286 or so. Um, started at frame 100, but this is just about a 186 frame animation or so. So it should be wrapping up here. Yeah, this should be the last one anytime now. Yeah, it looks like it is finished. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to do two more here. I kind of did um, some with different prompts just to kind of show you what this does. And actually what I'm going to do after this is done is I'm going to go ahead and do some still images just to kind of show you a, a quick kind of guide of what exactly control net does but let me go ahead and I'm actually going to restart this to see if I can get the frames popping up in here so I'll be back in just a minute we'll go ahead and start the next one here okay so now that I've downloaded those frames there from the Google Drive the ones we just you can see here they are 
So it's generated our frames there. Now I'm just going to go and assemble them in a movie editor. And there, like I said, there's lots of different editors you can get that will assemble individual frames into movie. But that's really all there is to it. So this is how we make the video with ControlNet using the batch image processing. So I'm going to go ahead and do two more. And then I'll show you guys all the videos as I'm making them here as well. Okay, and here is the final video. I did two more prompts with it here. So if you notice, there's quite a bit of flickering. So this is actually a little backwards compared to how the weights normally work. So on this one, when we put the weights or the strength setting down, it actually makes it look more like the video. So I just turn it up a bit, which actually makes it look less like the input. So it's a little backwards here, but I'll get it. I'll go into the settings with some later guides. I just kind of want to show you how you can actually throw a video together with ControlNet. And there it is. So it's, it looks kind of cool despite all the flickering. I like it. I will definitely be hitting this topic more, especially once it gets fully integrated into the form and everything, which is still a work in progress right now. But for the rest of the video here, I'm going to show you a few more of the models you can use with ControlNet. There's some other cool ones in there like Scribble. And you can use any one of those. Well, I'm not sure if you can use the Scribble in a video, but um, some of the other ones like the depth map, and a line map you can definitely use in a video. So I'll go ahead and show you those. And the rest of the video here is just going to be examining that. Okay, everybody, here we go. We have just seen the videos I just made. Now I'm going to get back in here. And I'm just going to do a few still images here. And show you some of the other methods here that you can use with ControlNet. So we're not going to do the batch this time. I've got some carefully selected images here. Well, just stuff I posted on Twitter. I'm going to start here with my infamous doggy rave wave that never got started. I don't know why. I thought it was really cool to have dogs at a rave, but it just didn't catch on for some reason. So what we're going to do here is... We're going to put horses at a rave dance party and show you just how simple it is. We're going to, should we do the negative weight? Sure, why not? We'll just put a little bit of spice there into the prompt, not too much. And we want to turn our control net on. And I'm going to start with the canny. I'm going to show you this time. I'm going to show you, I think I might have done this before, but we're going to preview it just to see what exactly. Oh, yeah. And I need to upload the doggy rave image that we're doing. And we're going to hit preview. So this will show us the kind of outline that it's going to use for the image. And this is going to do the same thing for the videos. It's going to do that with every single frame of the video. For that last method and let's see here let's crank the denoise strength up a bit turn the weight down eight this is about what i had the videos on and they were flickering quite a bit as you just saw so i will be doing some more videos on that and getting that dialed a little better i'm also going to start doing some live streams just for troubleshooting and things like that and it's going to take a minute we can check on it here and what I don't want this to do is to stop showing the display here because then I might just have to redo the whole thing. I don't want to have to load up every single image for this video. So I'm not going to flip tabs around. Okay, great. We're just going to let it go there. Okay, and there we go. We have just turned our doggies into strange looking horses. Great. Okay. Let's see. Let's experiment a bit with the weight let's turn it up a bit there I believe that'll keep it more like the image but maybe that's actually that actually kind of looks less like it doesn't it so maybe that was why my videos were flickering so much let's experiment with that one more time so what it's doing though is if you notice it's keeping the outline but it's just kind of it's Kind of like a hyper style change you know it really keeps the exact same shapes and everything but it changes the style pretty drastically yeah i think i think that does yeah so if you turn the weight down 
it will actually make it look more like the image. So it's a little bit backwards than I was thinking, so that's why it was flickering so much. So let's turn that, okay, I understand now, I think. So let's turn that up a bit. This should make it less like the image. So it's kind of the opposite of how our normal notebook works there with the weights. No problem, let's do, what should we do this time? Let's do seals. And there we go. Now all of a sudden we have seals at a rave party. That's just amazing, isn't it? Isn't this everything you've always wanted? Penguins. This one's for my daughter. She loves penguins. And there we go. So you can see Control Net is great. So this is the one we were using for the video. Now let me show you um, one other thing. Well, actually, I'm going to show you several other things. I lied just now. So here's an. So with the depth, this one kind of does um, kind of what it sounds like. It'll make a depth map of the image. So this one I didn't use it in videos too much. I'm just going to kind of show you what these do, and I'll show you the two other ones. Another one I thought was going to be really useful is the line one. So we'll get to that next. We'll go ahead and let this depth map show you first, though, how this one works. But I think the canny is definitely the one that just to make images and video. You can see it really changes the image quite a bit, but yet keeps it the same. So it has that perfect mixture there of changing things and keeping things the same that we've always wanted. We might not have known we wanted it until Control Net came out, but now we know that we did. And now we have it. So it's probably, it's probably going to take a little bit here in between these different... Um, models that I'm loading and there is the depth map so if you notice it kind of keeps um, things in the foreground and we can let's go ahead and let's go ahead and preview this one so you see it makes the depth map there so it's similar but it doesn't keep the lines it will actually keep these things in the foreground so let's go ahead and move on to some of these other ones here now this one I believe was one that would keep um, quite a few of the original image a little bit more and I'll put a link to the github there too where you can read some of that about it so yeah so if you see that so that's what we get for that one let's go ahead and let's generate this one see what we get here we'll put it back to the original actually but you can kind of take a look here and see how the different models here affect it and I've just played briefly with some of these different models. So if you see, this one still keeps, yeah, that one still keeps quite a bit of it. That's kind of cool too. So we can kind of keep it, or is that turn that into a real dog? I like that one. Let's um, let's do another one here. Let's in Otter of Nerdy Rodent, one of my favorite AI channels, and one of the guys who I started watching in the beginning. I first think I saw an EB Synth video on there. That's what kind of started me down this mad path, along with. Um, a Facebook friend that got me into my music and everything who was using Disco Diffusion. And there we go. There are some rodents instead of dogs. And that one looks so much the same. I didn't realize how much dogs and mice look the same. But look at that. There's not that much difference at all. So that one's pretty cool. That one keeps a lot more of the original detail, I think, there. And let's see. What are some of these other ones? This, again, was that line one that for some reason was not working very good with this image. Let me try it one more time here. Because I was getting some great results with that on my cyborg video. Nope, it just doesn't like this picture. So let's move on. We have spent enough time on that one now. now let's see normal map. I don't know if I've tried this one. There has been an update since I used this last. So that looks very strange. Let's go ahead and see what we get here. What should we change them to now? Let's do um, cows. We haven't done cows yet. And maybe for good reason, we will see. We'll turn the doggies into cows here. That one still kind of looks like a dog. That one did not fully change into a rodent at all. It did a real good job with their paws, changing their dog paws into mice, creepy little feet. Doesn't do human hands, but apparently it does mice hands very good. 
And this is the so-called normal map. This one might be interesting. We will see. Look at that. That is pretty cool. And let's move on to the next one here. Okay, there we go. And we're going to change this to scribble. There's probably a way to zoom this in too, but I'm just using my mouse here. But I might later actually have a drawing pad. I do the pencil sketches and things sometimes as well. Let's just do this. Okay. And there we go. We can see that definitely improved my drawing there quite a bit. And so this is control net and you can we can even change that to Let's do a punk rock man. Okay, there we go. <laughs> And there we go. Look at look at that. Look at how it changed that drawing so much. And let's we'll have to do a woman too, of course. And there we have a woman with very horrible fingers the way I drew them. It shouldn't have kept that. And let's do one final one here. Got to do the punk rock dog. Okay, and oh my, that is a scary dog. Okay, and I think that will conclude it here. I just wanted to show you a little bit of control net here. And this is a very cool feature indeed. You can see what a powerful tool this is. I didn't really intend for this to be a deep dive. I just kind of wanted to get into a little more. Oh, and segmentation, this is interesting. So this, I think, goes clear back to the GAN days when they had that, um, well, there's a program where different colors would mean different things. Like blue would be the sky. If you had something green, that would be earth. Like ground, there was things for fences and walls. So this kind of uh, looks like it was a hark back to that so i'm gonna get into this like I said i'll do a deep dive on the whole control net later so thank you for watching everybody again i will be tackling some more control net later and i will be keeping my eye on this for sure and i will also be doing some live streams some just basic setup session some troubleshooting and i will definitely be getting back to you with the d forum version of control net 2 and that extension and hopefully that gets out of the notebook but thank you all for watching. I will be back again very soon. I'll get it more into the settings for the videos as well. We will see how this evolves. But ControlNet is great. And I will put a link down below to this notebook that I used it with the Auto 1-1. You all have a great rest of your week.